Ah, ladies and gentlemen, class recording has started. So yesterday, we did a introduction to electromagnetic waves. And when we first started this section on waves, we talked about that there's you know, two big different or big differences between mechanical wave and, elect and electromagnetic wave. First, similarities. What makes electromagnetic waves and mechanical waves similar to one another? How are they similar? There's good. Both carry energy, right? Both carry energy from one place to another, right? Then the one big difference being the medium of electromagnetic waves can't travel through mediums. Uh, let's reword that. Not that electromagnetic waves can't travel through a medium. They don't need to. They don't need to. But mechanical waves do need a medium to travel through, right? And so we talked about that an electromagnetic wave looks something like this, right, where there's really two waves, an electric wave and a magnetic wave, and those two waves travel through each other, right? They're an electric field and a magnetic field, and we refresh, hopefully refresh memory about going back to, uh, you know, our electricity unit and how electricity affects magnets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is what an electromagnetic wave looks like. Um, we spent time talking about field forces, right, the idea that certain forces out there can affect the motion of other objects even without physical contact. And we call that area around it a field, an area where it has the ability to affect other things. And that's why this wave consists of actually two waves, an electric wave, and that's the yellow part, written a magnetic wave. And as the yellow arrows are getting bigger, the blue arrows get bigger. And as the blue arrows get smaller, the yellow arrows get smaller, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then we talked about uh, electromagnetic waves and the nature of those electromagnetic waves, right? Uh, transfer radiation, the transfer of energy through space without the transfer of matter, right? We said electromagnetic waves could travel through a medium, but they don't have to. And then we also talked about that the amount of energy that that wave carries depends on the frequency of that wave, not the amplitude like a mechanical wave. And so that'll be good as far as uh, transitioning us to the next part. So electromagnetic radiation is that transfer of energy without the transfer of matter or through space. What we look at, here, do this Right, no, okay, yeah. That when we look at, When we look at all of the different types of electromagnetic waves that are out there, we see that they vary in frequency and wavelength, and that then relates to how much energy they carry. Okay? Um, oh, let's go back here. So to finish up your outline, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll get to you. Yeah, we'll get that. Oh my goodness, where were we? Let's go ahead. All right, so we did this. We did this. We talked about how we measured the speed of light yesterday, right? All right, so what we find out is that there are several different types of electromagnetic waves. And those electromagnetic waves differ in their frequency and their wavelength. And as we mentioned a little bit earlier, therefore that means that they have a different amount of energy that they carry. So. All electromagnetic waves, regardless of their frequency or their wavelength, all travel at exactly the same speed. And in a vacuum, we gave you that number yesterday, 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, or 300 million meters every second. But even though they travel at the same speed, they have different wavelengths, they have different frequencies, and that relates to how much energy they carry. The higher the frequency of the wave, the more energy it carries. The lower the frequency, the less energy. We said that is definitely a difference between electromagnetic waves and mechanical waves, right? In mechanical waves, we look at the amplitude to tell us how much energy that wave carries. But in electromagnetic wave, it's the frequency. And then also, by relation, the wavelength. Good there? When we look at all of the possibilities for these electromagnetic waves, all of the different types of waves that are out there, we put them all together and we get ourselves the electromagnetic spectrum. 
the full range of frequencies of electromagnetic radiation. What we find out is that there are several different types of electromagnetic waves. And those different types of electromagnetic waves all carry different amounts of energy. And then, based on their frequencies, we classify them in different ways. So here, before you start filling in the list, let me give you the next, let me give you the next slide. So. All right, so full range of electro, uh, frequencies of electromagnetic radiation. So you guys don't have this picture, but you'll be able to transfer the information from this picture onto your list. Right? So down here at the, this end over here, you can see pictures of the waves as they go along. Frequency, as the green bar indicates, right? This wave has a low frequency. Why? How many waves are there in that space? A lot or a little? Pretty little, right? But up here, these waves have a very high frequency because there's a lot more waves in that space than there were down at the bottom of the, at the, bottom of the spectrum. And wavelength, the blue line, right, is an inverse of frequency because if there's more waves, they have to be shorter, blah, 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 blah. But they relate to the amount of energy that those waves carry. So down here at the low end of the electromagnetic spectrum, low frequency, long wavelength, we classify these as radio waves. And within those radio waves, there are things like actual radio, and then television, although we don't transfer television, or we don't transfer television signals by waves anymore. We transfer it through an electrical signal and a cable. But you know, back in the old days, if you ever see, like, if maybe your house has it, but have one of those big antennas up on top of a house, that kind of looks like, you know, there's like 27 different wires that come off of it. Those antennas were there for receiving these television waves as they went through the air, just like a radio, you know, a radio station or something like that. Right? Those are your lowest frequency waves, meaning they have the lowest amount of energy. But as we move up that spectrum a little bit, right, and we start getting into what we refer to as microwaves, right, a little bit more energy. Then we get into infrared, and I think most of you are probably at least familiar, or at least have heard of infrared waves before. Yes, it. infrared generally uh, is related to heat. So if we talk about an infrared wave or an infrared signal, that's more of a heat signal. If you've seen like uh, one of those um, heat imaging cameras that you know, like it looks at your body, and certain parts of your body are red, and other parts are blue, and stuff like that, that camera is receiving the infrared waves off of your body because they're giving off heat because you have to you know you're giving off energy and it transfers it into like a visible signal and then this real small sliver right through here right notice it's a very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that is what we refer to as visible light those frequencies are the frequency of light, frequency of waves, that our eyes are sensitive to. By their nature, visible light is not really any different than a microwave, or if you go up here, some of you have probably heard of, right, ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma ray, okay, here, sorry, let's do this. Sorry, I should've done this. Okay, see this list right here? That's the order that's, that they're supposed to go in here. So radio waves are at the top of that list in your outline. And as you can see from the arrows that I've put there on your outline, right? radio waves have your lowest energy. They have your lowest frequency but longest wavelength. Next up, infrared. Then you got your visible light. Just above visible light, ultraviolet, then x-rays, and then gamma rays. All right, do we have the list written down? The frequency, 
going low to high as we go from left to right on this picture, meaning that the amount of energy these waves carry go from here to here, okay? Radio waves. Radio waves hit you all the time, right? If we turn on the radio during lab or if we turn on the radio now, that means there has to be radio waves that are traveling through this room for the radio to pick up. They hit you, they hit me, they hit that radio, but they don't carry much energy, right? And way back in the first unit that we did, not the first unit, the second unit actually, right? We came up with our working definition of energy, right? What, what is energy? Ability to do damage. Those radio waves hit you all the time. Does anything happen to you? No. Okay. But as you move up, right, as you move up the spectrum, these waves start carrying more energy. Right? So microwaves, a little bit lower or a little bit higher frequency, a little bit shorter wavelength, they carry a little bit more energy. Is it enough to hurt you? No, not really. Okay. Visible light. Visible light, in the grand scheme of things, is pretty middle of the road as far as the amount of energy that those waves carry. But it's special because your eyes are sensitive to those frequencies. The cells in your eyes know when waves of that frequency are hitting them, and they send a message to your brain that says, ooh, light, okay? <laughs> That's how it works. Like, just gonna just kind of sit around, you know, and they're like, okay, uh, light, see it, yeah. <laughs> And then it sends it to the brain to figure it out, right? They don't, they, don't, they don't figure it out. They're just like, ooh, it's light, okay? And then your brain figures it all out, okay? But when you go one step past visible light, you get into ultraviolet rays, which I think a lot of you are you know, familiar with, right? What's the most you know, practical application of ultraviolet rays? The sun. Sun, right? And especially what, what happens to you in the sun? Sunburn. Sunburn, right? Can ultraviolet rays cause damage? Yeah, right? Varying degrees depending on how long you're in the sun how much sun you get, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, right, the ability to cause damage. Next up, x-rays. How powerful are x-rays? How much energy do they carry? A lot, right? Enough that they can travel straight through your body, right? Without, you know, well, most parts of your body, right? But not all of them. But, right, enough that when you go get an x-ray, right? Let's say you go to the dentist and it's time to get, like, your teeth x-rayed, you know? So, uh, the the hygienist lady lays down on the chair, right? She puts a big heavy lead apron on you, right? One of the important parts, you know? And then where does she go? Yeah, she's like, it's like, I'm gonna go stand in this room over here. <laughs> like, you just lay there though, don't worry, okay? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave the room and go stand behind a lead wall, all right? But you, you just lay there, it'll be fine. So don't worry, okay? But yeah, now, in small amounts, right? in small amounts, okay, fine, right? But if you're the dental hygienist or another x-ray tech at the hospital or something, and this is what you do all day long, right? If you're exposed to that much energy on a repeated basis, it's gonna cause problems, okay? Up here, our highest energy waves, we refer to as gamma rays, and that comes with the way that uh, the nucleus decays and stuff like that. There's a reason why, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the um, next section, but these are your highest energy waves. Here, these are the kind of waves that we, you know, when you, uh, if you've ever known anybody who has, who's had cancer, who's gone through radiation treatments, this is the kind of energy that they are exposed to. Okay? If you've ever known anybody who's gone through a radiation treatment for cancer, they can get almost like a sunburn on their skin because of the, the treatment that they're going through. Why? Because they're exposing them in short bursts and in real focused fashion to very high energy waves up in this range up here. Why? Because it kills cancer cells. But along the way, it also does what? Does it, know, does it know to distinguish between cancer cells and your cells? Not really, right? So that's why in a real short burst and a real focused um, arrangement, you're exposed to those gamma rays to kill some of those cells, but it also kills you a little bit too. Right? Not kill you, but some of your cells you know, along the way. If you are exposed to these types of waves on a repeated basis, right? Sometimes we say that you get cancer, right? What is energy? 
ability to damage, or more generally, the ability to change stuff, right? If you are exposed to enough energy, some of the things in your cells change, like their DNA. And if the DNA of your cells changes because of this energy that you are exposed to, right? DNA is important because what does it tell your cell to do? This is like the, this is like the 10 cent version of biology, right? But what does DNA do for your cell? Reproduces it. Reproduces it, right? It makes a new cell. So if your liver cell gets changed because it was exposed to radiation and now the DNA is different, when it goes to make a new liver cell, guess what? Is it making a liver cell anymore? It's making something different, right? And it doesn't work like a liver cell. And that's what we call cancer. That's like the five cent version of it, but that's what happens, right? That your cells get changed in some way. Sometimes it's because of this radiation that they're exposed to, this energy that they're exposed to, that can cause those mutations and cause those cells not to reproduce properly. Good there. All right. Let's go and let's talk about the, no, I want to do something here first. First, did everybody at least hear about the eclipse last night, the lunar eclipse? So last night, we had this is going to happen four times in the next like six months. So, and a lot of them will be visible in North America. You know, the moon goes around the sun, right, once a month, and if it lines up right, then, you know, if it's in the right place at the right time, the shadow from the Earth will go across the moon, and we have to put a lunar eclipse. Now, when you have a total lunar eclipse, sometimes, like, you get like the edge of the Earth's shadow, but if the Earth's shadow is just right, like the darkest part of the Earth's shadow will go right across the moon. And we get a total lunar eclipse. But when that happens, it doesn't actually blot out the moon. It makes the moon look reddish, like, go back here, because this was a better picture of it, maybe, like this. again, but it's got this reddish tint to it, and so as a result, 
they refer to it as the blood moon. It doesn't really have blood on it. And those pictures that they that came up before when I searched images, that's not what it looked like. It's not this. But, so that happened last night. So let's talk about why that ends up happening. And to do that, we'll go to this one here. Oh, isn't it pretty? Color, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. All right. First. So we just talked about that visible light, light that is sensitive, or that light that our eyes are sensitive to, the cells in your eyes, right, the rods and the cones, if you remember that, I don't know if you guys talked about that yet or not, but anyway, your, uh, your, uh, the retina of your eye has different types of cells on it, rod cells and cone cells, they're th sensitive to different kinds of light. Your cone cells are sensitive to different colors of light, different frequencies of those, of those light, and those frequencies are interpreted by your brain as different colors. But it's a very small amount of the electromagnetic spectrum that your eyes are sensitive to. Some different things happen with that visible light when they encounter different objects. So first, dispersion. As light waves pass from one medium to another, let's say from air to glass, so that light comes from the um, outside, passes through this glass, the speed of that wave changes and refraction occurs. And we talked about that earlier. Refraction is a wave property. It happens with mechanical waves, but it also happens with electromagnetic waves as well. When that happens, what we find out is that different frequencies of waves are refracted by different amounts. Shorter wavelength or higher frequencies bend more than longer wavelengths. As a result, am I right? That's not that's back in place. Wait, let me check the picture. So different colors of light have different wavelengths. So those different colors bend by different amounts as they pass from one material into another material. And what we end up with is this prism idea. And I think most of you have probably seen prism before, yes? This light over here, this is visible light, but it's white. White light is a combination of all those different frequencies of different colors. Each frequency is, a, is your, interpreted by your eye as a different color. If all of those frequencies are there, it shows up as white light. But as this white light goes into the prism, it bends. But all of those different frequencies bend by different amounts. And they always bend by the same amount, so we end up with the same order. Sorry, that was confusing. Red light always bends the least. Purple light <laughs> always bends the most. So when they go from the one medium into another medium, they end up separating, but always in the same order. And that order is your rainbow, right? Good old Roy G. Biv, right? Yeah, so, except they kind of got rid of I. I just kind of, indigo just sort of, everyone kind of looked at it, and nobody could tell, I don't know, nobody could tell the difference between violet and indigo anyway, so they were just like, eh, let's just kind of, you know, mess that one up, right? But, this is the idea of dispersion, the fact that as this light goes from one medium to another, it bends, but different frequencies bend by different amounts. So you end up with those colors that were all together and showed up as white light, but now they're all separated so you can see them individually. Good there. This happens, right? Obviously this happens when any kind of uh, medium changes, but when you know when it goes through the window like this, because it's happening all over the place, it just sort of all get mixed, all gets mixed back together. If you know this beam of light hits the glass and gets 
bent, but then a beam of light would come in down here and get bent by different amounts. They all just sort of get mixed back together when they come out the other side. So that's why when light comes in out of this window, we don't just see rainbows everywhere. Okay? But depending on the time of day, depending on the way the light is you know, coming in, you may have, you, know, you can see sometimes too, like if you have um, like a little trinket that hangs in your window or you know, something like that, depending on when the light hits it, what time of day it is, you may get those different rainbows that kind of show up around your room or your kitchen or wherever it is, right? Because of the way that the light is currently hitting it. Okay. Good there? Obviously, this also happens sometimes in water drops as well, and that's how we get a rainbow. That you have to have that change in medium. There has to be something the light passes through going from one medium to another to make it change and become something different. All right. Red, longest wavelength, it bends the least amounts, but then violet has the shortest wavelength and it bends the most. Okay? So depending on the wavelength, that causes the light to bend different amounts. So how's the rainbow like arched? That's more, Andy, that's because when it, uh, because the water droplet is round, that affects the way that it shows up on the other side. Okay? It actually, are we wearing the, do you know that the sun has to be behind you in order for you to see a rainbow? Okay? What's actually happening there is that the water drop is playing the role of the prism, right? But what happens is, is that this light will go in light will go in, it will enter the raindrop, this is an exaggeration because it's not exactly like this, but it goes in, it hits the back of the raindrop, and we said that at the, at the um, change in, at the change in medium, a couple things happen. Some of it reflects back out into the, into the raindrop again, and comes out this way, and that's the rainbow that you see. Right? The other side of it, it gets um, you know, this transmission part here, if you're talking about a rainbow, this gets transmitted out the other side in a way that people on the ground can't see it because it you know, goes off like off the edge of the earth. Does that make sense? Right. So this is the part, the part that's reflected back off the inside of the true water drop that we see. So that's why the sun has to be behind you so it can hit the back of the water drop and come back to you. So, but yeah, that's why it's, it has to do with the shape of the water drop and how it changes as it goes through. So. All right. Next. So, different colors depend on two things. They depend on what color that object, or sorry, what is that object made out of and what color of light shines on it. Certain materials reflect some colors of light but absorb other colors of light. Depending on that material and the amount of light that shines on it, that will determine what color it is. So here's a picture of a green leaf. On the right-hand side, you see that, you know, here we are, Roy G. Biv, okay? white light is coming in. And white light contains all of those different colors of light, all of those different wavelengths. Okay? But when it hits When it hits that leaf, we said one of three things can happen when waves encounter a new medium. Do we remember the three things that can happen when waves encounter a new medium? This goes back to last week. Reflect. Reflect. Refract. Refract. Absorb. Absorb. Right? So two of those three two of those three things are happening here. But not the same thing is happening to every wavelength. The stuff in the leaf, right? So the chlorophyll that's inside of that leaf will absorb every single color of light except green. It reflects the green light. So things look the color of light that they reflect. Why? Because for something, for us to see something, the light has to get to our eye. A lot of people get it confused. They're like, oh, it's green. It should absorb the green light. If it absorbs the green light, it doesn't look green to you because you don't see that green light. Right? So things look the color that they reflect. Right? That leaf looks green because it reflects green light. Okay? So 
Alright, go ahead. I was having a conversation with another teacher. And okay. I was wondering on black, is it every color and not a color? Things look black in the absence of light being reflected off of them. Okay? So, So, do you see the stapler? No. <laughs> you might see parts of the stapler, but you don't actually see the stapler. So, why not? light that reflects off of them. Okay? This is blue and red because certain parts of it reflect blue and certain parts of it reflect red. What color is this? This is yellow to me. Ever since, ever, ever since, I, ever since I bought this folder, I'm like, oh, this is my yellow folder. And I'm just like, every, I mean, every single student, but some, almost everybody's like, oh, it's a green folder. So, but, right, that's whatever color you want to call it, because that <laughs> color of light reflects off of it, okay? This is black because it absorbs all of the light. So do you see it? Let's go this. Okay. So let's do this. Okay. Um, anyway, do you want to go like? Do you want to go like more practical, or do you want to go like super weird? Super weird. Yeah. Uh, do we know? Do we know what a black hole is? Are we familiar with the concept of a black hole? Okay. Do we see a black hole? No. No. Black holes absorb light, so you don't see. But we know they're there. Why do we know they're there? Well, because everything around us reflects it. Yes, and as we watch everything around it, it's all like heading to this big dark spot. You know what I'm saying? So we kind of go, oh, there must be something that has a lot of gravity there because it's bringing everything to that spot, even though we don't see it. Right? So taking that logic, do you see the black box? No. What do you see? Absence of light. You see the absence of light, but what do you see around the black box? Light. You see everything around it. So your brain fills in the picture and goes, oh, that must be a black box. Right? Do you see Eris's shirt? No. No. But you see Eris's arms, and you see Eris's head, right? You're like, oh, it must be a black shirt. No. You're wearing a shirt, but people can't see it. It's like this. So, Eris, it would be the same thing, it would be the same thing as if you stood behind a big black curtain, right? People couldn't see you. Why? Because light's not bouncing off of you and getting to their eye. Does that make sense? Wouldn't it be the same if it was like a different color curtain? Yeah. But yes, it would. They still wouldn't see you though, because they're not getting light from you. Does that make sense? It's also the same thing if 
we could make this room totally dark, right? If we make this room totally dark, I mean like pitch black, right? Do you see anything? No, why? Because there's no light for you to see. You only see things that light either comes off of them on their own, like this, right, like the lights, or light bounces off of them. That's the stuff we see, right? So in the case of your shirt, you know, you don't see it, but we fill in the space all around it and go, oh, it must be a black shirt there. Does that make sense? So how do we make it a pigment stuff? So paint the pigments that are in paint reflect certain colors and absorb certain colors. So, you know, it's the same thing as this leaf, right? Green paint contains a chemical, I don't know if it's chlorophyll, I don't think it is, but it contains chemicals that absorb all the other colors of light except for green, and it reflects green. That's good. Is the black box reflect like building as like a highlight and shit? Ah. Now that's the thing, that's why, that's why the stapler is a little bit confusing, right? Because we said, you told us that three things can happen when that light encounters a change in medium, right? One of those things that can happen is what? Absorption, right? But also reflection, right? So, you know, you can see sort of like a reflection off of this, right? You can see some shiny parts there. That's some of that light being reflected. But if we have something that has like a dull finish on it that absorbs everything, it would look black, but it wouldn't have like this like shininess to it. Does that make sense? Is that kind of that's what your question was asking about, right? So yeah, sometimes we can see see black things, but they don't like. But the reflection, right? Like the reflection that comes off of this shiny part, it's not black, right? I mean, you can see like the lights. You know, like you can see the lights, the white from the lights that. When we see things that either give off their own light, like light bulbs, right, or reflect light, and the color that they appear is determined by the amount of light that they give off, or the kind of light that they give off or reflect, not the light that they absorb. Good there. Pretty much, yeah, because you can't really. So, like before, the blood moon, right? Let's go back to the picture. So, why does the moon look red during the eclipse? What's the only reason the moon looks red during the eclipse? It reflects red light, and only red light is getting to it. Under normal circumstances, it looks white. Why? Because the moon under normal circumstances actually reflects what? All of those colors of light. Does that mean something fundamentally changed about the moon last night? No. The amount of light that was getting on the moon changed. Only red light was getting to it, so it only reflected red. Why was only red light getting to it? That. So to do with this, okay? that it, as, like we talked about, as the light goes through the atmosphere, it bends because of the change in medium going from space to the atmosphere. The different colors of light bend by different amounts. And so red here, the you see the red, right? It gets there, and now there's only red light getting on the moon, and that's why it looks red. Good question, hey everybody. See you guys tomorrow.